Greetings everyone and thank you for joining us for this week's edition of GTV. I'm Don Valiant and this is the news from Kyungi Province this week. Kyungi Province is seeking ways in which to utilize irregular, unmarketable agricultural products such as undersized vegetables and scarred fruits so as to reduce waste and associated social costs. Current plans include organizing online sales events as well as promoting the use of such products for food ingredient packages and as raw materials for processed goods such as juices and cosmetics. The province also plans to expand related initiatives for eco-friendly products to general agricultural products. Kyungi Province recently launched a facility information app for limited mobility users including individuals with disabilities as well as seniors and pregnant women. Upgraded from the previous version launched in 2019, this new version includes added features such as a nearby facility search, navigation and voice recognition so as to improve services. This app also enables users to communicate with the app developers involving them in its development through site visits and the registration of frequently used facilities. Kyungi Province announced plans to make an education disaster support payment of 50,000 Korean won per person to approximately 120,000 youths in the province who were excluded from a corresponding payment made by the Kyungi Provincial Office of Education. Launched by the central government, education disaster support is provided either through cash or in kind to primary, middle and high school students who have been unable to attend school due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Application for the payment can be made in person at local out-of-school youth support centers or through email or fax. Military barbed wire fencing along the banks of the Han River in Gimpo City, which blocked public access to the riverside for security purposes, will be removed in two phases by May next year. The relevant riverside areas will then be developed as parks and returned to the public. The military will install state-of-the-art surveillance equipment in these areas and return selected sites to the public where security operations are not affected. Kyungi Province's regulatory sandbox program has achieved significant and positive results. In total, five enterprises participating in the program successfully induced investments of 21.2 billion Korean won, increased sales by 200 percent, and created 182 new jobs. The regulatory sandbox program exempts new products and services from existing regulations within certain conditions so as to enable testing and safety verification. Enterprises seeking to participate in this program can submit applications to the Regulatory Reform Division of the province or to the Kyungi Business and Science Accelerator. On November 2nd, the partially amended Animal Protection Ordinance entered full effect after being passed during a general meeting of the 355th Kyungi Provincial Assembly on October 12th. This ordinance will provide the provincial government with the basis to support the establishment and operation of stray cat feeding stations and animal adoption centers. With this ordinance taking effect, the province also plans to promote the adoption of abandoned animals and expand the development of pet-related education programs. The first royal placenta chambers of the Chosun dynasty were recently discovered in Taechonmyeon of Gwangju City. Royal placenta chambers contain the placentas and umbilical cords of royal newborns. This site consists of three such chambers located side by side, the first to be discovered in Korea. On November 10th, Kyungi Province and the Kyungi Cultural Foundation publicly presented the discoveries made at the site. The province plans to excavate more royal placenta chambers at other probable sites. Thank you for joining us for this week's edition of GTV. We look forward to seeing you again next week.